Bristow by Frank Dickens, with Michael Williams as Bristow, Rodney Bewes as Jones, and Dora Bryan as Mrs. Purdy. The Great Escape. Amadeus. Is it Amadeus? You know, the god of the sun. Or is it Leo? No, Leo is a lion. Apollo, then. Hmm, sounds right. I think it could be Apollo. I should know this, being a sun worshipper. The sun is important to me. I watch it from nine until five every day. Not head on, of course, because of the damage to the eyes. I look to the side. From my desk I watch it climb slowly, 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 oh, how slowly some days, across the sky in silent majesty. A great golden face with a gold helmet and a gold beard, passing from left to right across the windows of the Chester Perry building. You can tell it's coming up to holiday time, the way I'm talking, and this year I'm organised. Not too organised, of course. I don't want to go through that again. A couple of years ago I went to Mudsey, and every day I booked for the mystery tour and the masked ball, and at the end of the holiday I didn't know where I'd been or who I'd been with. But that was then, and this is now. And this year, I've booked with Fun Boys, Holes for the Prowls Limited. So, you heard of our travel agency through a friend? Not a friend, no way. Chap that works next to me all day in the buying department of the Chester Perry organisation happened to be standing near a litter bin the other day and saw your brochure. Ah, the brochure, of course. Years of experience went into that little production. I was particularly taken with it, the way it's composed of letters cut from newspapers and stuck down, the way ransom notes are done. And, to cut a long story short... Don't tell me, sir, you hurried here. uh, No, I never listen to anything he says. It must have registered with my subconscious, however because I was in a telephone kiosk the next day, one of those kiosks that has a lot of those little cards stuck on the wall. I can explain that, sir. Some of our distributing agents are not known to us personally. No, listen. Mm -hmm. And I was staring out of the windows of the kiosk, the way you do when you're waiting for the person at the other end to pick up the phone, and I saw this row of shops across the street. Of course, and you saw us. No, I am a sun worshipper and I spent a lot of my time watching the gold face with the helmet and beard crossing that little tent of blue that people call the sky. But I've always been careful of going blind, so I never look directly at it, always to the side. And as I was looking at the middle shop... You saw... The the one one on on the the end! end. (laughs) 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 So, here you are, finally, and you'd like a holiday? Uh, Correction. I want to make all my own arrangements. I want a roof over my head and a telephone. You want a clerical suite? Then you shall have one. It must have a sea view. Fun boys to la plage is on the end of the pier. A firm flat bed. I'll get some pillows for the billiard table. All sweet bathroom. All the sweets have a window. Hewitt, today I would like you to make as much noise as you can. Whistle, shout, sing, whatever you like. I'm on holiday next week, and I want to get used to sleeping on a crowded beach. Well, before you doze off, look at this filing system. What kind of system is it? I'm glad you asked, Hewitt, because it's my own system. The Bristow system. I before E, except after C, when there's an R in the month. I hope you haven't been doing it this way for very long. Ever since I've been here. And it's never been questioned... Mm. You've never queried it yourself. It never crossed your mind to... Of course one... not. Oh. According to my calculations, Mr Bristow, you've cost the firm umpteen thousands of pounds, possibly millions. Well, I never. That's all I can say. Well, I never. No doubt when they discover it, they'll stop it out of my wages. Wages? Dream on. Morning. Morning, Morning postboy. Mr Bristow... Is it my imagination, or does time really drag here? Work it out. I got in at nine, and it already feels like three score years and ten. Cheer up, lad. Oh, cheer up, he says. What for? What have I got to look forward to? What are the prospects for a kid like me mm. here? Prospects? Prospects? 
Uh, a word is seldom here in this neck of the woods. Bristow, uh, you are on holiday next week. Uh, yes, Mr. Fudge. Your work is up to date. Uh, yes, Mr. Fudge. Then stop wasting time talking with the boy. Get about your business, lad. And behave yourself. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't know how you let him speak to you like that. I wouldn't, as a rule, but as I'm going on holiday tomorrow, it's like water off a duck's back. Do you know what I'd do if he spoke to me like that? Mm. I'd get blind drunk, smash a few windows, loot a few shops, turn over a car or two and then have a punch-up with the law. You don't understand. That's exactly what he expects me to do. And then I get put into solitary and lose my holiday. No, thank you. I'll play it my way. Get a knife. <sighs> Morning. Morning, Jones. And a lovely morning it is. Oh, it's all right for some. Like those people going on holiday tomorrow. Oh, cheer up, Jones. What have I got to be cheerful about? I passed Fudge in the corridor this morning and I couldn't control myself. I gave him a look of malevolent hatred. Every fibre of my being was expressed in that glare. All the years of pent-up frustration showed on my face. My every feature was contorted with pure, unadulterated venom. Good Lord. What was his reaction? He didn't notice he was talking to someone. Tough. And he doesn't like it when you tell him to pay attention. <laughs> I'm wondering about bathing costumes. How do you feel about ankle length in leopard skin? Or maybe something in... Oh, Bristow! I am not interested in you and your damned holiday. I don't care what you wear. Go away and let us get on with your work. Because that's the way it always ends up. Us doing what you keep putting aside as soon as you know you've got a holiday coming up. Isn't that the way it is? Sorry, Jones, I wasn't listening. I was reading my holiday itinerary. I began to realise that when you are about to go on holiday, everyone around you is slightly jealous. <laughs> well, not everyone. Mr Bristow, hmm? they say you're going on holiday tomorrow. It's not true, is it? Unfortunately for you, Miss Sunman, it is true. Will you be all right? Uh, bearing in mind the simple thought of it brings on dizzy spells, the occasional blackout spots before the eyes, hot and cold spells and trembling hands, I shudder to think of the effect that reality will have upon me. Are you packed? Considering the clothes I stand up in are the clothes I lie down in, there is very little packing to be done. So you may rest easy on that score. I wear my dinner jacket on the train. Here's my telephone number, in case you need me. Right. Now, how can I contact you? A flaming torch set to a beacon on top of Muswell Hill would bring me hurrying to your side. Oh. Come and get me! Morning, Mrs. Purdy. And how are you this fine day? Oh, I'm in a bad mood since you asked. Oh, do tell. I'm late because I refused to do an interview with the firm's house journal. They wanted to do an article on what it's like to be a tea lady, and I turned them down. I don't want anything in writing about me in case my friends outside got hold of it. They think I'm a private secretary. And, uh, Mrs Purdy, since this is to be my last cup of tea before I go on holiday, I would like something special. Stand back! There you are. Drink it before it stops bubbling and the flavour disappears into the air. Mm -hmm. Going on holiday, are we? Where to? Uh, Mudsy. Oh, I've got a little sister lives in Mudsy. Francine, she runs a sandwich bar. Look her up and give her my regards, will you? Certainly. Now give me her address. Connie's Pantry on the front. You can't miss it on the front. I shall call there tomorrow. Morning, all. That was one of the most foolhardy acts I've ever seen. I shall report you to the... Have we met before? That prison pallor seems to ring a bell. I think we may have. I never forget a clenched fist. Oh, of course. That idiot buying clerk from Chester Palace. You're not going to Mudsy. <laughs> Funny you should say that. As you can see by my Wallace and Cromit T-shirt, I am on holiday. It... Of course... The chap from the canteen good food guide. You off to Mutsy too. Mind your own business and stay out of my way. The next stop is Mutsy. Please take your belongings with you when you leave the train. I wonder whether I've made a mistake coming to Mutsy for my holidays. 
I haven't been here since I was a child. And things are never the same. My word, how this place has changed. That's where the toy shop used to be. That's where the infant school used to be. That's where the sweet shop used to be. That's where the nursery used to be. That's where the sea used to be. Here we are. Fun boys, sur la plage. A friendly reception area, a polished counter, and a map of the town. Yeah, let's see. Mm. Seems strangely familiar. Bank there, restaurant there, telephone there, secretarial college along the street. Holy mackerel! This town has exactly the same layout as the Chester Perry building. 7.30, a shower. A change of clothes, and then... Yippee! The high spots! Shop! Good evening. Uh, Bristow is the name. Show me the nightlight. Would you mind keeping your voice down, sir? Everyone has gone to bed. Oh, dear. And I was looking forward to getting something to eat. Your restaurant is still open. We'll open it specially. Can I take your order? Ah, I'd like an avocado with shrimps, poached turbot, and a Chateau Brion bayonnaise with French fries and tomatoes. I'm sorry, and... sir. We don't do coach parties. <laughs> Typical English seaside scene. The sea, the cliffs, the cobbled streets, and on the sea wall, a grizzled old sea salt spinning yarns to the youngsters. Let's tarry a while and listen. In my time, my young hearties, I've heard many a strange and terrible tale, but none worse than the hotnins on the hill fated schooner, the Westerbury Gilding. Westerbury Gilding? That sounds like Chester Perry Building. I'll get closer. Were splashing against the walls, and the cries of the crew were terrible to hear. Shiver my pins. It sounds as if he's talking about the great tea trolley disaster of 87. Of mercy, mercy came the cries, and only by the crew of the rescue ship. Sir Reginald. Sir Reginald? He is describing the great tea trolley disaster. Excuse me, sir. I don't wish to spoil your anecdote, only add to it. What? Oh, upon my soul, eh, children? That'll be the end of today's narrative from David's locker. Come back tomorrow for further stories. Move along now. Good day to you all. Bye now. Who are you? My name is Bristow, and I work for the Chester Perry Company. Do you really? Which department? Buying. Oh, I used to run the publicity department. I was there for 12 years. Then one day I must have said something out of line. And, uh, well, here I am, and, and making a comfortable living out of the place. I, I talk about the luncheon voucher swindle and the coffee break fiddle and all the other day-to-day -day happenings when I work there. Uh, anything new I can use? Not really. Wait. A new girl started in accounts yesterday. Perfect. Uh, parrots fighting over a captain princess as they are burying the treasure chest. Uh, Wonderful. What else? They've lined all the desks up in the typing pool. Ah, it's the king's chefs stirred information off the coast of Madagascar, waiting for the arrival of Captain Morgan and his band, the cutthroat. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll buy you a drink tonight if you turn up at the drinks drum around seven. See you there. Ah. Now then, Connie's Pantry has recommended. Good morning. <laughs> Bonjour. Guten Tag. <laughs> Give up. What are you? <laughs> you mean nationality? I'm British. Are you Francine? Oh, how did you know that? You've been following me and listening, have you? <laughs> Tell the truth now. Your sister, Mrs Purdy, told me. She works for the Chester Perry Company. I know. <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea and a biscuit? Yes, please. Stand back. <laughs> There you are. Drink it before it stops bubbling and the flavour disappears into the ozone. <laughs> if your name is Francine, why is this establishment called Connie's Pantry? When Valerie, that's my sister, heard we was going to open a sandwich bar, she made us a present of cups and saucers and plates. Oh, of course. All the crockery is Mark C.P. 
Chester Perry, Connie's Pantry. <laughs> Very clever. And his biscuit tastes familiar. Hmm. The Bath Olivers don't travel. You won't tell anyone about the crockery? Of course not. Cross your heart and hope to die? You have my word. Is there any message I can give Mrs Purdy? No. And you better go. My husband will be here any second, and if he sees me talking to strange men, he gets violent. I like on the ocean wave. Ah, oh. oh, far out on the briny. Just doing my own thing. What more can one ask of a holiday? Sea, sand and sun. Looking to the side, naturally. Splash. Splash. Oh. Splash. Splash. It's so good to get away from the treadmill. Come in, Pedro! Will Pedro number 27 come in, please? I'm coming in on the crest of the next wave. Whee! <laughs> Land ahoy. All ashore. Who's going ashore? Uh, that'll be uh, one hour and ten minutes at uh, four pounds seventy per hour. That's, um, hold, hold on, uh, uh, carry four, uh, uh, then there's a uh, plus... Seven. Just a minute, I know. Mm-hmm. You used to work for the Chester Perry Company. Didn't you run the accounts department? That's right. I ran it for seven years. Then one day I must have said something out of line. How are Chester Perry doing? They're going from strength to strength. No one seems to do any work, and yet we're getting bigger and bigger. I don't understand it. Strangely enough, I do. There used to be a man sat at a desk near the door of production control who used to carry the firm on his back. What a worker. Worked non-stop and flat out from the time he got in till the time he left. <laughs> Sounds as if he's still there. Chap with bags under his eyes. Mm. Yeah, he's still there. <laughs> hey, anybody in charge of pedalos? I am. Well, how about some service? Just a minute, chum. Well, if you're too busy, they're plenty no, no, of... No, no. Coming, coming. Sorry about this. Oh, no problem. Good heavens. It's Mr Botherwick of the Canteen Good Food Guide. Ah, it's you again. <laughs> you were in Connie's pantry early on, chatting up my wife. Uh, laughing and joking. Uh, what the hell is going on between you two? Uh, yeah. I want the truth, uh, even if I have to come and beat it out of you. Uh, now, steady on the pair of you. Yeah, get out of my no, way. No, I've had enough of this chap. Uh, you lousy Lothario, you. Uh, Chat up my wife, would you? Uh, uh, I'll kill him. Uh, uh, That evening, I decided to see the local nightlife. So I called in at the Admiral Benbow to slate the what's-it and was suddenly aware of a man at my shoulder. Uh, my eye. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, yeah. First visit to Modsey? Yeah. And I must confess I'm enjoying it hugely. The weather, the ambiance, in short... Everything about the place. Mm, it's a funny thing, but I seem to know you, and I certainly recognise the voice. I work for the Chester Perry Company. Th- that's it! I knew I'd heard your voice before. I was fleet manager of the Chester Perry Transport Division for 15 years. Ah. And one day I must have said something out of line. Ah, oh, when I worked at Chester Perry's. I used to sit in the motor pool watching the sun climb slowly across the sky all day. Climb from left to right. Oh, you couldn't. Your window was opposite to mine. I get it from left to right. You must have got it from right to left. No, no, no the, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, whichever way you look at it. Uh, keep still. Let me come round to here. Uh, oh, yes. You'd get it coming across from there to there, <laughs> yes. Hmm. <sighs> Did you ever see it as a great golden face? With gold helmet and gold beard. Uh, no, I, I, I always saw it as a gold Britannia without the shield and trident. But but I know what you mean. Mm. A golden face with a beard and helmet. <laughs> I like that. It, it's better than Britannia. <laughs> but you mustn't look at it full on. Always look at it from the side. Otherwise you can go blind. I've heard that. But I think it's here, sir. Uh, no, it's true, believe me. You can. I've known people... Well, I don't want to talk about them... But they've all got guide dogs. 
You must look at it from the side. Mm. What do you do? Now, I'm a local pilot. Ah. Seeing the big boats in and out of the harbour, it's a wonderful life. Yeah. No wonder you are so interested in the sun. It's an integral part of the job, I shouldn't wonder. It is, it is indeed. Well, I'm sorry, but I have to go. There's a big boat coming in tomorrow. I need all the sleep I can get. Also, since I'm a local celebrity, after I've brought it in, I've been asked to switch on the town illuminations tomorrow night. Oh, sounds interesting. Well, around here it's considered a big deal, but to a townie like yourself, well, maybe we can meet after I've done that and uh, we can have a chat about old times. It installed tomorrow morning latest. Who do these jokers think they are? When I want something, I get it. Close up, George. Sorry, chum, we're closing early today. Uh, just a minute, I'm in the middle of a... Bristow? Hmm? Bristow? Of buying? Dougie Turner of accounts? Well, I never. What are you doing in this neck of the woods? I live here. Thanks to you, I own this place and a few hundred others. Mm? I'm rich, Bristow. And it's thanks to you. Thanks to me? Thanks to you getting me the sack from Chester Perry's. I don't understand. But you remember the business with the penalty clause over that invoice and it was in your in tray all the time? Somebody had to take the rap and it turned out to be me. Well, I never. I'm sorry. You don't need to be. The best thing that ever happened. I was at work and destitute. I turned my attention to the thing I loved above all things. Electronics. Come over here. Look at this. It was an old-fashioned fruit machine. Something in my expression must have told him I didn't know what he was talking about. For he went on... This baby was the start of my fortune. Mm? Bloke I know was going to dump it because it didn't work. But something inside me said, Doug, don't let him... I got a book from the library and with some piano wire and some parts from an old vacuum cleaner, fixed it up and made it work. <laughs> from this baby, I built up the business to what it is today. And now I'm a rich man and I'm in demand. All the towns along the coast use my firm for everything electrical. <laughs> I see that you're looking at the machine and wondering whether it works. Mm. It does. And to prove it, I invite you to play. It takes old-fashioned pennies. Don't worry, I have an old-fashioned penny. It's OK, I have my lucky penny. It saved my father's life in the First World War, and I have it with me always. May I use it? Certainly. Off you go. Good score. Very good. <laughs> it's a great machine, huh? <laughs> Does the coin come back? Of course. Allow me. That's funny. These things are sometimes temperamental. <laughs> we'll soon have your dad's coin out. Where's my box of tricks? Now, we take this off here, and then... Pass me those pliers, will you? And then we uh, remove... Ah, just a second, I'd better switch off the power. When these old machines are connected to a modern circuit, they sometimes need a period of time to readjust. Ah. Now, by pushing this, we get... Ah, there we are. One lucky penny. Thanks, Dougie. Listen, Bristow, I want to put this thing together and check things before I switch the power back on. I'll uh, see you around. Sure. Now then, where's that book on wiring? Leaving him to his tinkering, I walk slowly down to the town centre to watch the switching on of the illuminations. Everyone in Muncie was there, but for some reason not known to me, there was an air of gloom. This was heightened when the mayor stepped forward and addressed the townspeople. Uh, as, as you know, Mr Engers was due to switch on the illuminations tonight, but owing to the events of the day, of which the old town is fully aware, uh, yeah. <laughs> he is unable to be here. And I am standing in for him. Oh. Uh, no, no, not having a speech ready, since I was called at short notice, <laughs> I will, without further ado, 
switch on the Mudsy Illuminations. <laughs> and then all at once, the lights came on. A blaze of living colour. Oh. And then... He suddenly went out again. The area was plunged into Stygian blackness. Voices around me voiced their sentiments. Is that me normal time around this part of town? Oh, someone's got some dodgy wiring around here. If ever find out who it is, he'll be Lynch! Sensing trouble, I dived into the nearby Admiral Benbow, which was not affected by the events I have just described, but was packed to the rafters. Everyone present was riveted by the television set in the corner, and following the adage, if you can't beat them, join them, I did just that. The accident of Muncie, which has caused damage running into millions of pounds, appears to have been the result of an error by the ship's pilot, who allowed the vessel to veer off course and hit the harbour wall. We go live to the stricken vessel and an interview with the pilot. It, it, it was one of those decisions that anyone in my position has to make once in a lifetime. The sun was low in the sky as we approached the entrance to the harbour. I've done this many, many times before, and there was no need for instruments. But I've been told as how the secret about looking at the sun is not to look at it full in the face, as it were, but a little to one side. <laughs> you told him that. <laughs> Time to go home. Bristow was written by Frank Dickens and featured Michael Williams as Bristow, Rodney Bewes as Jones, Dora Bryan as Mrs Purdy, Owen Brenman as Hewitt, Katie Odie as Miss Sunman and Mrs Wood, John Glover as Fudge, Sol Funboy, the Station Master, Mr Engers and the Sea Salt. Christopher Benjamin as Bothwick and the Mayor, Simon Schatzberger as the Postboy and Carol Starks as Francine and the TV Newsreader, with David Ryle as Turner.